Welcome to Just Break Up, the podcast about love, heartbreak, and all the relationship advice you don't want to hear. My name is Sierra DeMulder. And I'm Sam Blackwell. And today we're going to answer a letter from somebody whose boyfriend is really an emotional roller coaster. But before <laughs> we begin, say an <laughs> asshole. <laughs> yeah, well, I was trying not to like lead too hard, you know, I yeah, want to yeah. like ease people into it. Uh, Before we begin, we just want to give you our Surgeon General's warning, which is that Sierra and I are not licensed mental health practitioners. Nope. We are not professionals. We are not trained in any of this. So please take our advice as you see fit. We're only here to offer our humble musings to hopefully shed some understanding um, and maybe some laughs about the incredibly rewarding but mostly confusing experience that is love. All right, let's get into today's letter. So today's letter comes from Broken Hearted, whose pronouns are she, her, who is writing from New York. Hi, Sam and Sierra. Couldn't help myself. I never thought I'd have to submit a letter to you, but here it goes. I, female 24, have been dating my boyfriend, male 24, since early 2023. We made things official in April 2023, and honestly, things were going really well at first. He goes to a very prestigious military school, which is all new to me, and I have my career in New York City, so we are about an hour apart from each other. We would see each other on some weekends when we had time. We met on Hinge. I just found out that he virtually cheated on me. I was stalking his Instagram a few weeks ago because I thought he was hot and wanted to look. And something told me to look at the comments of this one picture. Under it, I saw a girl had commented, perfect fire emoji. I thought this was strange because his profile is private. After doing some digging, I found her profile was private, but they both follow each other. I decided that the next time I saw him in person, I would ask him about this. While it was a bit triggering, I assumed it was nothing. Earlier this week, he was visiting, and I thought to myself, I really need to ask him about this person. I did, and he said, oh, it's just some random person. I'll block the account. I said that I'd like to see her profile, and he kept making excuses, saying it was unnecessary. He deleted Instagram, even though he just had it the day before, and saying that it would look bad on him. I told him, as your partner, I would like to see this person's profile. It would make me feel more secure. I don't care if you liked her photos. I just want to see it. He re-downloaded Instagram and was standing away from me on his phone. I got up, walked over to him, and saw that he was on her profile. I asked to see it, and he blocked her before I could see anything. I was pissed. Now I had no idea who this person was, and his behavior was very suspicious to me. He then said it would make him look bad if I saw her profile. And I was like, why? And he, and then it came out. I was messaging her. I found her and I went to her story and said, you look good. He was cheating. I was shocked. I still am. The last few days he has been calling me, crying and begging for forgiveness and another chance, promising to do all of the things I've been asking him for months. To be honest, the last few months he's been acting different and accused me of gaslighting him or attacking him for no reason. I asked a simple question about Instagram and he said, you're attacking me. Or if I said, hey, this thing that you said hurt my feelings, he'd say that I'm gaslighting him. I felt like I was losing my mind. Mind you, I also found out that he had been following random girls, not famous Instagram models, but ones who were easily attainable with a small following and liking pictures of them bent over in bikinis and other thirst traps the whole time that we're together, which is something that we both agreed was a no. For a bit of context, back in September, he stated that he was going through a very stressful time at school. He would need to delete social media and put all his energy into school and wouldn't be able to talk to me until September 25th. He said he wanted to be my boyfriend still, but if I decided differently, that was fine. I thought, that's only three weeks away. I understand. So we can still be together. Good luck. So we agreed about that. According to my calculations of when the comment was made, a few days after he stopped talking to me is when he starts messaging this girl. I was so confused. Why, if everything was fine and I'm being loyal and waiting for you, would you do that? In October, we still weren't talking much. And one day I saw he was liking pics with this girl he fucked last summer before we started dating. I thought, well, if he's doing this, why am I over here holding back and not liking any guy's pics? So I followed a few guys who are Instagram models with hundreds of thousands of followers and liked some of their pics. That was it. He called me out on that and I admitted that I was wrong and sincerely apologized. Now I look back and think, wow, he was mad at me for that, yet he was messaging and flirting with other girls online? What do I do? Am I being unreasonable for not wanting to be with him? I feel so bad when I see him calling me and crying. It hurts to know that he wants to be the man for me that I needed months ago, but it feels like it's too late. I can't trust him and I can't move forward if I don't trust him. 
I feel stuck almost. I really loved him and cared about him, but I just don't know what to do. Sorry if this is too long and confusing, but any advice or insight on the situation would help. I've never been cheated on, and this honestly was something I never thought he would do. What do you guys think? Thank you so much. All right, my darling. Thank you so much for writing and trusting us with this letter. <gasps> Guess what? Ooh. While reading this letter, <laughs> uh. my blood pressure. Oh, imagining, remembering those times of like catching people, partners in infidelity. <gasps> I remember when then, I was and then in like bed. Having to explain it away and just being like, what are you saying And the saying chipping to me? away, the chipping yeah. away of the truth, which like, Oh, I just, I hate that we are put in that situation. I remember the last time I was, no, it wasn't the last time I was cheating on. <laughs> it was just the first time in that last relationship. Um, <laughs> I remember being like, so what happened? Wait, wait, can you clarify that for me? Mm, so uh -huh. you do. And I had to like ask these follow-up questions because my ex was being so questionable and just like the letter writer, it like it chipped it down, it chipped it away. And then, and then out it comes. And I remember chucking my phone and being like, you fucking asshole. <gasps> oh God. So anyway, this is all to say, <laughs> uh -huh. this is all to say like, uh, my blood pressure like was raised while reading this letter. I can only imagine the physical and emotional toll of this. It honestly, it remind another reason why I wanted to answer this letter is like, it's been a minute since we've answered like a, a basic, like men are trash letter. <laughs> 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 They're not. And this isn't that, but it reminds me. <laughs> they are. And it is. That's fine. <laughs> um, it reminds me of like, I don't know, JBU circa 2018, where we would just be like, fuck this dude, fuck yep. this behavior. You deserve yep. better. <laughs> so I'm going to put Absolutely. on my 2028 JBU hat and, um, and t affirm all of the feelings that you're already feeling right now. Like how gross this feels, how confusing, and also like under all the anger, how sad and scary it is to have a romantic, uh, intimate partner betray your trust like this. Uh, and Sam and I are going to affirm all of you and also hopefully give you some advice as to how we think you should move forward. Obviously, you know what's best for your relationship and your life. Um, but uh, we're going to dive into all of that. But first, we're going to take a very quick break. All right, everyone, welcome back. Um, before we get into some of the uh, yelling that Sierra and I are going to do, uh, <laughs> I, I first just want to like say as like kind of a caveat to all of this, um, that like we all recognize that like different people have different definitions of what cheating is and looks like. Right. And I know that for some people in relationship, commenting on somebody's Instagram, sending them a message, like wouldn't constitute cheating. Right. And, and like, that is okay. And we also know that like one of the things that we talk about on this podcast a lot is like demonogamizing our understanding of the world, right? And and sort of recognizing that like our partners are still gonna have crushes on people even though they're with us. And that like there are places where we can challenge ourselves to to recognize some of that. And I do think that that's something to, to sort of consider in some of this letter. And also it sounds like y'all had some pretty clear parameters about what was acceptable and unacceptable. And those lines were crossed, right? Which I think is like the main crux of what's going on here. Like you two agreed about what you know to be cheating and, and this man did it anyway. <laughs> so like, I just want to like start with that. Cause I, I want to, I want to like have that sort of like global conversation before we get into like the real specific of what's going on here. Um, and just name that like, you know, this isn't really an, a, a thing of like you two had different definitions of what was acceptable or not acceptable, which sometimes comes up in relationships. Like you two had some very clear parameters around he what knew. was okay and not okay. Yeah, he knew. Like this isn't like a confusing thing that has happened, yeah. which is also, I think, a thing that cheaters <laughs> often do and has been done to me where Capitalize it's like. Capitalize off. Yep. Off of, yep. <clears throat> yeah. Where I it's like, oh, cool. that didn't, I thought this yeah, was that, didn't, that doesn't count as cheating. And I it's like, I just sent the fire planet? emoji. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, absolutely. I just went over but, there. I didn't have sex with them, like, but I watched them have sex, which is a very specific <laughs> example from my life. <laughs> uh, I forgot about that story. Oh my God. <laughs> 
I didn't cheat on you because I didn't partake, but I was there yeah, watching. I was there and naked. In the yeah, room. That's, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and not home in bed with you. Then, yeah, oh, okay. I forgot about that one. <laughs> Woo, my face uh, is hot. Okay, now blood pressure. <laughs> Back up again. Um, okay, so yeah, I think that's a great thing to point out. And I actually, I want to end this letter by talking about what do we want to take from this experience? You know, because I mm. don't want the letter writer... I guess I could talk about it now. I don't want the letter writer <laughs> to take from this the idea that all Instagram liking is going to be unsafe in the future. Or I don't want you to take from this, as I probably would, that a hypervigilance to protect myself from cheating in the future. You know what I mean? Like, it's unfortunate that you felt an insecurity. You felt like a little, you know, hair at the back of your he- neck sort of like something's wrong here um, and you investigated it and it's really shitty that your that those bad feelings were backed up by his bad actions. You know what I mean? I hate when our fears are proven right because that's when they start making those like cemented neural pathways in our brains. And I don't want you in the future to be like, oh my God, everybody's going to cheat on me and everybody's going to be dishonest and liking somebody's Instagram photo or thinking somebody else is attractive means they're going to cheat on me because it doesn't. Right. right? And also, like Sam said, it sounds like it was more than just a like number one (laughs) Mm -hmm. sounds really questionable. The thing, you know, him hiding things and everything. And also, um, icing on the shit cake is him accusing you of the same behavior while he was doing that. Like then, then, you know, like this is all nefarious. This is all manipulative. And all of the, the the sad feelings that he's feeling now, I think, is like genuine, true remorse, probably because he got caught and he sees the he sees the damages that his actions created, you know, hurt for you and and you ending the relationship and, and removing yourself from his life. Um, and also that is sometimes the lessons that we need to go through to become better people. Not for you though, my dear friend, <laughs> like he doesn't yeah, need to, you don't need to usher him into a better version of himself through this experience. I mean, he fucked up and he lost your trust. And like, I don't blame you at all for being like, wow, this is really shitty and I don't want to be here anymore. That sounds really, really like a reasonable response. To be honest, a response that I wish I had in my relationship when I was cheated on. Instead, I was like, oh, no, let me cling (laughs) to the small fantasy of you. Uh huh. Absolutely. Yeah. And I also think like, you know, all of this, you know, this like double standard that he's holding you to the behavior that he was doing that's outside of the bounds of your relationship, like, and also the way that he's engaging in conflict with you, which is to say that like any time you try and bring something up with him, he tells you that you're attacking him and claiming that he's being gaslit, which is like funny because it's like ironically him claiming that he's gas being gaslit is like actually gaslighting you (laughs) right like it's like (laughs) you're making this up you're making me feel crazy and it's like no but this thing actually happened so why are you telling like that it's just like this man sounds immature is like the only thing that I can think about right like it he just sounds like he doesn't know what he wants he sounds like he doesn't know how to engage in conflict in a way that is like helpful right like especially because you know, the conflicts that you all are having about how you wanted him to show up for you, how you wanted him to behave differently in this relationship, like he didn't do anything about, right? Like, yeah. and now once push comes to shove and he's realizing that he could lose you because of all of the behavior that he's been exhibiting now, it's like, oh, I need to change. I need to do something. But like, that's not actually a super sustainable way of changing behavior, right? Like how many of us have had an ex like come up to us after we've called them out on some bullshit that they've done. And they'll be like, Oh my God, I'm going to be really different. I'm going to be like the best boyfriend ever. I want to marry you. Right. Like I'm going to be so wonderful to you, blah, blah, blah. And then like four days later, it's like, Oh yeah, no, they're back on their old shit because like, of course this wasn't sustainable because they were only doing it out of fear of losing me, which is like not actually. And then once the fear of losing me goes away, then of course they're going to act the same way that they did before because there's no like intrinsic motivation for any of the change of behavior, right? Like it's all just like panicky yeah. from like thing to thing. And like, that's, I, that's just a mark of immaturity to me. Like this man, I, I don't think that this man is like ready for a meaningful relationship. I hope that at some point he is like, I hope that at some point 
he learns from this experience that like he needs to behave differently in relationships. But I don't think that you should be the one to teach him. And I think that the tears that he's crying about how sad he is that you're are gone are deserved tears. <laughs> like Helpful. he deserves They're, to feel bad about his behavior. We learn from discomfort. We learn from regret. Absolutely. He's feeling guilty about something that he did wrong, which is like cool. That's a that is a way that we learn how to do stuff, right? Like Sierra said, like that is a, a motivator for us to behave differently, which is good. I hope he learns a lesson from this. But I want you to not have to be the one to teach him lessons about how he yeah. should be behaving in relationship. I want you to be with somebody who's going to be, who's going to adhere to the, the rules that you all establish, who's going to hear your requests and your need for support and say, cool, here's where I can meet you. And here's where I can't. Right. Or somebody yeah. who's going to, when you're in conflict with them, hear you and say like, I disagree about what's happening here, but I would, I'm interested in moving forward as opposed yeah. to like all of this bullshit that you've been waiting through over the course of the last month or whatever. Like, yeah, that doesn't seem like it just doesn't seem sustainable. And, and I don't think you deserve that. I think you deserve to have somebody who's able to, to be in authentic relationship with you and not just like doing things out of fear of losing you. Yeah. I, and you know what? I want to say, you know, you write like, am I being unreasonable for not wanting to be with him? I feel so bad when I see him calling me and crying. Right. Just block him. <laughs> <laughs> then you don't have to see it. <laughs> That's very true. Number one. Number two, I want to say like there, are, there will be ample opportunities in your life for you to learn through discomfort. There will be ample opportunities for you to push the bounds of your compassion and your empathy to become a better person, right? To deepen the intimacy of your relationships. There will be plenty of time for that in your life. And with a man who cheated on you, lied to you, and is now feeling an extreme amount of remorse for a reasonable amount of remorse for his shitty behavior, who is also long distance, like in school, right? I, I read that right, right? Like that, that they're, what I'm saying is the, the process of rebuilding trust with this person in this particular scenario in this way, like rebuilding trust after, after unfaithfulness, long distance is very difficult. It's very difficult. I will tell you that. And it, re it will require an extreme amount of labor from you to move th past th this, right? And I just don't know... If, as you've said in your letter, you should like, like, you don't, even, you, you're, you're writing to us two strangers to say, is it reasonable for me to not want to be with somebody who broke my trust? My love, it is so reasonable for you to say, I'm done with this, right? If you want to come back to me at a different time where you can bring more to the table other than stress and all of this emotional labor and heartbreak that I'm going to have to dish out to get over your choices, then that might be a different offer. But right now he's offering you to be the person he should have been the first time around. Only if you do a ton, and I'm talking a ton of emotional labor and growth together to forgive his shitty actions, all while not being in the same place, all while not knowing what his day-to-day -day actions are. And like, Again, the, the, the lesson I want you to take from this isn't I can't trust people when I don't know what they're doing, right? That's not true. Trust didn't hurt you. This shitty person did. And people will be able, you will be able to trust people in the future, right? Um, but I just don't know. This ain't it, right? I, I, if I could wish something for you, I would wish for you to say, I, I wish for you to know in your heart and body that you have a right to walk away from things that aren't nutritious and loving and beneficial to you. Yes. Does he love you? Yes. Does he feel regret? Yes. Did he fuck up and we all fuck up? Yes. I have compassion for him. I totally do. I'm an ex cheater. I've been there. I've been this person. And also I feel like we're sold this lie about relationships that we have to make it work or else it's meaningless. We have to make it work or else all of our love is wasted. Our labor is wasted. We have to make it work or else why the fuck did you go through this shitty experience of being cheated on? 
Well, let me tell you, I think you went through it so that you would know this person is not the person for you. And you can close (laughs) that door lovingly and with compassion by blocking him. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Yeah, no, absolutely. Cause he, he doesn't deserve your time and attention. Right. And like, and I think that narrative of like, it has to be worth something is also about like this thing that we have sort of this idea around the like people who get cheated on, like should have known better and like should have like seen it or like shouldn't have trusted this person. And like, of course we do that because like we love to blame victims for everything under the sun. And like, you didn't choose this. You shouldn't, it's you being cheated on. is not a reflection of you in any way. It's a reflection on the person who cheated on you and his own feelings about himself, his own inability to like, manage his own impulses, right? Like all of these different things to, to say hard things about how he's happy or not happy in your relationship, right? Like all of that is what is driving this to happen. And I say this as a cheater, like as somebody who has cheated, like, yes, that was all a hundred percent true of me when I was in that place where I was doing that cheating. Um, so like, this isn't about you and, and there's nothing here that you need to fix because you didn't do anything wrong, right? Like this isn't, you didn't ask for this. You didn't deserve this. And I think to get back to sort of like the lesson that we can take from this, um, is that right? Like you have to decide what you want to do in this situation, knowing that this person is behaving in this way, right? Like you have choice in this. And unfortunately the two choices might be really terrible, which is like break up or like try and rebuild with this person who's betrayed your trust, but you do actually get to decide this. And I think that Sierra and I want you to feel like you deserve better than what you've been given in this moment. Cause you absolutely do. And we've said this a lot on the podcast. There are people out there who are going to not make you work so hard to win their love, right? To make them stay with you. There are people out there who are just going to want to be with you because you're wonderful and vibrant and interesting and fun, right? Like there are people out there who are going to want that. And, and this man doesn't deserve that given the behavior that he's exhibited towards you. Um, and want to make sure that you're not taking this, and rolling with it as a reason to never trust anyone ever again, or to, to be suspicious of every behavior that anyone that you're dating is doing, right? Because people are capable of finding Instagram models hot. People are capable of flirting with somebody at the bar. People are capable of working with someone that they find really attractive and deciding not to act on those impulses and deciding to continue to be with you and deciding to honor the agreements that you have in your relationship, whatever those agreements are. Like there are people that are capable of that. And, and just because somebody has crushes or feelings or finds someone was attractive, doesn't mean that they are going to cheat. It just means that they're a human who has an attraction or a crush or finds someone beautiful. And that's okay because we want to be in relationship with humans and not with, you know, automatons or people who don't feel anything. Right. So don't take this as an excuse to distrust every person in your life who you are going to meet soon, who follows a hot person on Instagram or who has a crush on their coworker. Exactly. I think that's beautifully put. And my darling, we love you. We're so sorry this happened. And we hope you feel better after listening to this. Uh, Thanks for writing. (laughs) We love you. We hope that this helps. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for listening. If you would like more content from us or if you would like to join our monthly office hours, you can support us on Patreon. If you support us on Patreon for as little as $5 a month, you'll get an additional bonus weekly episode as well as access to office hours, which is when Sierra and I hop on Zoom and we're joined by all of our patrons who can ask questions or get our input on something or just shoot the shit with us. That's patreon.com slash justbreakuppod. You can slide into our DM, send us your favorite relationship meme, but most importantly, you can submit your questions about all matters of the heart at justbreakuppod.com, which is also where you can find our merchandise. Please remember to like, follow, subscribe, give us a five-star rating and review. This literally keeps our mics on and helps us reach more brokenhearted souls who need two random strangers giving them relationship advice. Just Break Up is a production of Duvid Media, original music, recording, editing, producing all magical things by our good friend Spencer Worth Davis. Make sure to check out his podcasts and his music. 
And remember, it's okay to walk away from something that you've put a lot of energy and emotion into. It's okay to look at someone that you still have love for and say, this is not a safe place to put my love anymore. There are people out there who won't betray your trust, who will reciprocate your love and your energy, and who won't make you work so hard. And if all else fails, just break up. <laughs>